Renault's traffic is one of the most popular choices amongst businesses looking for a large transit-sized van with a payload of up to 1.2 tonnes. Smart styling, tight pricing, low running costs and a wide range of body styles are amongst the key reasons why. Once upon a time, if you wanted a large van at an affordable price, you wanted a Ford Transit. Since the turn of the century though, one design has been changing things. This one. It's known variously as the Vauxhall Vivaro, the Nissan Primastar, or as in this case, the Renault Traffic. And it's an option that you have to consider if you're shopping in the sector between compact and monster-sized vans. Thanks to the introduction of greener, 2-litre DCI Euro 4 compliant models in 2006, this vehicle has continued to rack up steady sales. Now it sits just above the Kangoo and just below the well-respected master in Renault's commercial vehicle lineup and is aimed at operators wanting a maximum payload of up to 1.2 tonnes. On the move, though new arrivals better this vehicle for ride and refinement, handling remains safe and predictable. If your experience of traffic motoring has been one of the uh, early versions of this design with the 1.9 litre DCI engine, then you'll notice a big improvement at the wheel of one of these 2 litre Euro 4 compliant models that offer um, more performance but just about the same fuel consumption as their predecessors and have 26% more pulling power from the 90 and 115 PS engines that's on offer. Now, we'd go for the 115 PS unit if you possibly can. Uh, torque goes up from 240 to 290 Newton meters, and top speed is raised uh, from 90 to 99 miles an hour. For those interested in towing, there are trailer weights of 2,000 kilograms braked and 750 kilograms unbraked. And if that's of real interest to you, then you may want to consider the uh, top of the range 145 PS a uh, 2.5 litre DCI diesel model that I'm driving here with its academic 106 mile an hour top speed and far more important 320 Newton meters of torque that you access through the six speed manual gearbox that's standard on all traffics but uh, all but the 90 PS entry level model also come with the option of a uh, semi-automatic quick shift six transmission that urban dwellers might want to consider. Now, uh, urban users will really appreciate the 13.2 lock-to-lock tight turning circle between curbs, which rises to 13.7 metres between walls, with just 3.2 uh, turns of the power steering lock-to-lock. -lock. The avant-garde shape, which rolls down production lines in both Luton and Spain, still looks as distinctive today as the time it was first launched back in 2001. Now the unique part of this design is probably this domed roof which aids entry and exit and also improves, improves side visibility. Other careful design touches include these uh, bumpers at the front with their integrated fog lamps and air intakes uh, that sit just below these large headlamps with their built-in turn indicators. At the rear, the tail lights extend high up towards the roof from the bumper for better traffic visibility. Inside the cab, it's clear that build quality isn't quite as you'd find it in, say, a Volkswagen Transporter or a Mercedes Vito van, but then you're not paying that sort of money. As you'd expect from a modern LCV, it's all very car-like, with a theoretical room for three across the front here, although uh, the dash-mounted gear stick, even though it is built into the uh, console here, does rather get in the way of the middle seat. Now, stuff we like. Um, there's a hook there for your Friday night takeaway. There's a one button for the uh, locking for all the doors. And there's also a remote controls for the stereo off the steering wheel. And you get remote control central locking from the key fob as well. A nice option to consider is the, uh, the fastening cargo system that uh, provides uh, movable fastening points for your luggage at the back. List prices start from just under the £16,000 mark, excluding VAT, but in reality you'll probably find significantly lower figures available at your local Renault dealer. 
Now, obvious rivals, uh, apart from this design's Nissan Prima Star and Vauxhall Vivaro clones, include LCVs like Ford's Transit, Fiat's Scudo, uh, Peugeot's Expert, or Citroen's Dispatch. As you might expect, there's a wide range of variants from which to choose. You've got to select from uh, two wheelbases, that's 3,098 3, millimeters as here, or uh, the long wheelbase version, 3,498 millimeters. You've got uh, two roof heights to choose from, 1,960 with the, the low roof height as here, or 2,500 millimeters as with the high roof versions. Then you've got to choose between the different van variants, the panel van, like we've got here, a refrigerated panel van, a platform cab, a double-sided, uh, double-deck drop side, or uh, even a nine-seat minibus. Some operators who want to provide carriage for both people and packages go for the six-seat traffic crew van version, which provides four cubic meters of space and is based on the uh, short and long wheelbase low roof model. Here I've gone for the best-selling SL, a panel van version, that's uh, short wheelbase, low roof, and uh, it's uh, trimmed here in Sport Guys, that's a version that many buyers go for. Now air conditioning standard across the traffic range, and there's an impressive range of infotainment systems, including colour sat-nav. ABS is of course standard on all traffic models, and you've got the option of ESP stability control. Okay, on to the figures. Now the traffic range gives you a huge range of uh, gross vehicle weight options ranging from just over 2.7 tonnes to just over 3 tonnes. Uh, payload weights, well for the 2 litre DCI panel van models they go from 1,045 kilograms to 1,247 kilograms and for this 2.5 litre DCI model it goes from uh, 1,082 kilograms to 1,265 kilograms. Now you've got a choice of a couple of wheelbases either 3,098 millimetres or 3,498 millimetres and a couple of roof height choices as well with the tallest one giving you a total load volume of over 8 cubic metres. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Now if I was an operator I'd be pretty tempted by the high roof version with its standing room interior height of 1,910 millimetres but here we're going to concentrate on the uh, low roof short wheelbase panel van that's most popular. What do you need to know? Well, it has a length of 4,780 millimetres, a width of 1,900 millimetres, and a height of 1,960 millimetres. But what's important is what you can fit in the thing. So let's go inside and find out. Here, the loading length is 2,410 millimetres with a loading height of 1,320 millimetres. To save you doing the math, that uh, means a total cubic capacity of five cubic litres. Now that rises to six cubic litres if you go for the long wheelbase version that has uh, 5,180 millimetres of vehicle length and 2,810 millimetres of total load space length. Now that's enough for three Euro pallets. Of course, you could argue that there's no such thing as too much space, in which case opt for the uh, long wheelbase high roof version that has a total loading capacity that I mentioned earlier, 8.36 uh, cubic meters if you want to be precise. Now to access all of the traffic space you get a standard this uh, one meter wide sliding door with the uh, a second sliding door as an option on the other side, we've gone for it here. As you go in uh, a step uh, aids access but if you're over four feet six inches tall you better mind your head. Now um, you've got eight tie down points mounted around the uh, loading area here but if you forget to use them and the whole load slides forward in, uh, in motion then uh, you've got a full length uh, mesh steel bulkhead here that uh, I've, I've opted for the much better full steel bulkhead that's got uh, the option of a glass panel in here if you want it. So how else do you access all this space? Well the normal arrangement is this one where the left hand door opens first uh, to 90 degrees and then you've got clips that easily release it to 180 degrees. Although in the long wheelbase traffic you can also opt for clips that go to 270 degrees so that the doors almost fold around to the side of the vehicle. 
As an option, there's a one-piece glass um, tailgate that lifts up conventionally like a family hatchback. And costs, well, you can expect to average around 34 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle if you're at the wheel of one of the two litre DCI models. And that's a figure that'll fall by three to four miles to the gallon if you go for this 2.5 litre DCI. Uh, CO2 figures, well, they range between 218 and 222 grams per kilometre of CO2 if you go for uh, one of the two litres, and between 220 and 229 grams per kilometre if you go for this 2.5 litre DCI. Operators will also want to bear in mind the low insurance costs and the 12-year anti-perforation warranty. Plus, uh, there's a three-year, 100,000-mile warranty with roadside assistance for the duration and no mileage limit for the first couple of years. Whether you should choose the Renault version of this design rather than its Vauxhall or Nissan clones probably depends upon the deal that you get and the proximity of your local dealer. Now, the, the traffic has proved to be deservedly a success story for this French brand probably suggests that its franchise network is getting things right in this respect. As for the vehicle itself, well, although some aspects of the road-going experience do betray the age of this design, they're not really, in all honesty, things that most businesses will care about very much. What's more important is that as far as the most significant practicalities are concerned, new arrivals still struggle to provide an appreciably better package for the money, with things like the spacious shape, the general durability and the low running costs that uh, businesses always look for firmly nailed down. Good design obviously pays.